Credit Union Prayer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please reverence yourself for the Credit Union Prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there's hatred, let me so love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. And where there's darkness, light. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Greetings, I'm Laurel Marez, Manager Quality Assurance. And I'm Colin Bartholomew, Head of Department for Cooperative Studies, and we will be your Masters of Ceremony for this Graduation Ceremony 2021. We would like to extend the warmest welcome to the Minister of Labor, Mr. Stephen McClashey, the Chairman and Board of Directors of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, the Director, Management and Staff of the College, and our Commencement Speaker, Mr. L. Anthony Watkins specially invited guests, viewers of this virtual graduation ceremony, and members of the graduating class of 2021. This year's theme is Adapt, Adapt Navigate, and Conquer. So we invite you to sit back, relax, and take in this evening's proceedings as we take you through graduation ceremony 2021. Enjoy. Next up, we have the Chairman's Address, delivered by Dr. Hyacinth Guy, Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies since July 2019. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Guy to deliver her address. Thank you, Masters of Ceremony. The Honorable Stephen McClashey, Minister of Labor, Mr. Anthony Watkins, our distinguished commencement speaker, members of the Board of Governors of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, Dr. Andrew Vincent Henry, Director of the College, faculty, staff, guild members, students, graduands, other specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to everyone and on behalf of the Board of Governors, I welcome you to the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. This is the second graduation event we are conducting virtually. The first was in March this year for the 2020 graduating class. Today we have 266 graduands who have successfully completed the college's prescribed requirements across six disciplines and 27 specialities. I congratulate you all on this achievement and I recognize too those who have supported you along this journey, perhaps a spouse, parents, extended family, and those who may be viewing this ceremony with you today. This college provides opportunities for many persons. They know they have the potential to achieve and perhaps they could not find elsewhere that exact program mix and program flexibility they were looking for. Or perhaps they simply could not find the right environment with the persons who had the capability to take them from where they are to where they want to be. And this is what we have and what we do at the college. We take you as you are from where you are to where you want to be. Our student base comprises working professionals, families, single parents and staff members. Many of you would have had to pivot as we had to when COVID-19 disrupted our normal way of operating in 2020. 
when after more than 50 years of teaching primarily through face-to-face -face interactions, we moved to improve and increase our online offerings and we migrated to an e-learning platform. Of course, this was not without its challenges, but today, some 18 months later, and having leveraged our strengths as we accelerated the digitization and the digitalization of the workplace, we are seeing growth in student uptake and in our online conferen conferencing services, and we are quietly carving out a space for the college. We have seen that our student demographic like the program flexibility that the college offers, and this is likely to be an ongoing feature of the college in the future. So this brings me to our theme for this year's graduation, adapt, navigate, and conquer. This theme so aptly captures the resilience of the human spirit. When COVID-19 disrupted our normal way of operating, we had a choice. We could have charged forward into this new space or we could have remained where we were. We chose to charge ahead. And had we not done so, we would have found ourselves adequately prepared for a world that no longer existed. And this is what education is about. And John Ruskin put it very well a long time ago. He said, education does not mean teaching people what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave the way they do not behave. This is how we adapt. We behave differently when the environment changes, but we must have the will to do so. That will drives the inspiration to change. We set new goals and we persist and we carry on in spite of the challenges. And this was demonstrated at the college as we quickly pivoted and began the adjustment process. And then we had to navigate that change process. We set new goals. We had to focus on these goals and that takes effective leadership. It is important for leaders to recognize that there will be resistance to any change process, that not everyone will adapt. But once we have that critical mass of people moving with us, then we can create that tipping point for the organization. So our leaders must be able to effectively engage stakeholders in the change process. Our students, our faculty, administrative staff, our line ministry and other agencies with whom we interact, the unions, the credit unions. We have already seen evidence of this. The college recently held a successful Caribbean Workers Forum with 427 participants from 29 countries and 68 presenters. Soon the proceeds from that conference would be available. We are also well on the way to digitizing our records and soon we will be able to leverage this digitization process to improve our business processes. And once we adapt and set goals to navigate the change process with effective leadership, we will conquer. Because we would have begun to shape that new image of this college, one that through our collective efforts we defined and through our collective efforts, we would bring to fruition. I'm happy to be here and to be part of this celebration, and I'm honored to chair the Board of Governors of this important institution. We take seriously our responsibility to make a significant contribution to the development of our country by supporting and lifting working people to realize their potential. Honorable Minister, thank you for your ongoing support. We are especially appreciative for your advocacy on behalf of the institution. I would like to thank the hardworking staff of the college. They rise repeatedly to our challenges despite their own challenges. As we continue this journey, I assure you of my own and the board's commitment to work with you and with our other stakeholders, trade unions and credit unions, to ensure that Cipriani College achieves its goals. Graduands, I salute you and applaud your determination and successes. I have said this to two graduating classes before, and I will say to you now, this may be the end of one program of learning for you, but see it as the beginning of your program of change. Become a torchbearer for the college, especially 
when you demonstrate the competencies that you would have learned at this college in your places of work. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, I thank you and I wish you all success. Hi, I'm Robert Charles and I'm one of the graduating students for 2021 from the Supriani College of Labor and Corporate Studies and my faculty would have been the Security Administration and Management. During my tenure here, it has been challenging to see the least, which is expected for you to achieve uh, goals one has to put in work. And Supriani was able to put that type of work together and where the challenges became, sometimes we would say overflowing, the administration and staff was able to bring to the students, including myself, a sense of direction and a sense of plan. I could speak directly to when I would have been going through my own personal challenges within my family. The administration was able to speak with me, put me in a position to achieve my goals and also work with me so that I can get through that challenge in my personal life as well. While at the campus, we would have encountered uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, we would have counted earthquakes, uh, the bad weather, you know, you know, it has rained. And most importantly, when the pandemic hit, the administration was one that very seamlessly and effortlessly brought us from the physical classroom into the virtual classroom, which a lot of us, it was challenging, but for most of us, it was welcome because it meant, it meant to us that we were able to continue these studies, stay on target and accomplish our goals without being obstructed by the lockdowns that was implemented by our authorities to save lives. At the same time, I won't say that the administration of themselves won't challenge, but I have to applaud them for bringing themselves forward towards us the students. And at times you would forget that these administrators equally had families that they were also concerned about. In closing, I would say if you're looking to a career path and find a future and an institution to guide you, I would advise you that Supriani is the place to be. You can look them up on Facebook and give them a call. They're ready and willing to take you to your next academic success. Be safe. We'd now like to welcome Dr. Andrew Vincent Henry, the director of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. Dr. Henry will be delivering the director's address. These are difficult times, but they are not impossible times. They are times that may test us, but they are times when we get to demonstrate our resilience and our strength. And I like to think that CCLCS is a good objective lesson of how to fight in times of difficulty. Permit me to start my address by paying respect to the memories of the members of our CCLCS family who would have fallen over the last year. We mourn each of them and we wish them sweet rest. Most recently, we lost the much beloved Kathleen Davis a former student and longtime lecturer. Kathleen epitomizes the profile of the SIPS student, a fierce defender of right, just, equity, and truth. A beauty born of inner peace, calm, and grace, even in the face of struggle. We send Dave and the rest of her family our love. 
And now, it is with admiration and appreciation that I address our graduates. I cannot say this often, but it is one of my high honors of my professional life to be asked to lead the college in this short season. My greatest motivation in coming to work each day, and even at times out of the office, is an unwavering belief in the positive contribution that I am convinced that this organization makes to individual lives, to working people as a group, and to our country as a whole. Most of you have followed your course of study on a part-time basis. I appreciate the extent of sacrifice that you have made to get to this point. Most often a full day's work, and you did it even as you fulfill your obligations to your individual families. Then you did it all over again for more days than you probably would care to remember. And in the last 20 months, we've asked you to do it in a raging pandemic. We have no choice but to admire you and to thank you for the honor and privilege of being able to serve you. We apologize for those times when we may not have lived up to your expectations. Leading the college at this time is an assignment not without its significant tests of intellect, creativity, and resolve. We are operating in a tertiary education environment in Trinidad and Tobago that is markedly different from what obtained 54 years ago when the college was founded. From that which obtained 25 years ago when we made the transition from vocational school to full-fledged tertiary education institution. And from what obtained 10 years ago when at the height of the GATE program enrollment numbers hit more than 3,000. All this just reminds us, and I reference my friend Anthony Watkins, who is our commencement speaker for this year. We have to reflect deeply and act resolutely. And this is what we have been doing in the face of the pandemic. It has not been easy. In fact, sometimes it has been frustrating, but the results are becoming obvious. So, on behalf of the Cipriani team, I offer my heartfelt congratulations to each of you. Today's celebration is a fitting tribute to the sacrifices that you have made and the determination that you have shown to reach this milestone. I trust that this is an occasion that you will remember fondly for the rest of your lives. Let this be a milestone for you. Continue the pursuit of personal and professional development and build on the foundation that you have laid here at the college. It is also an important day for your parents, partners, family, and friends. The achievement of a degree or a certificate is one that is self seldomly obtained without the support of those nearest to us. I offer special congratulations for our first cohort of regional students who have participated in their programs exclusively online. We welcome you and we thank you for giving us this opportunity to serve you. Our country's founding prime minister was clear about and focused on the truth that a good education was at the core of personal development. CCLCS works to live up to that vision in a rapidly changing environment. From our vantage point, we look across our country and we see our graduates making meaningful contribution to national development. I urge you to take up this battle. As you move to the next stage of your careers, I want you to be empowered by your accomplishments. I want you to realize that even as you have completed this chapter of your journey, you need to continue learning and developing yourself. Even if not in formal education, there is an imperative for lifelong learning, ensuring livelihood and professional satisfaction demands that each of you commit yourself to seeing the end of your Cipriani experience, not as the end of your education, but as one platform or pillar 
of your personal development. I wish you well, and I ask you to stay in touch with us. Thank you very much. Hi, I am Renee. I am a 2021 graduate from the Faculty of Project Management for Cipriani Labor College. What can I say? This has been a very long journey for me in terms of completing my degree here. And it was made longer by the pandemic, where it took my extra year to complete my course based on you know, having school for a couple months. One of my best moments of Cipriani is the approach of the teachers that they teach. Because I remember Mr. Sezi coming into class, he had a just saying good afternoon class and saying to us, what are requirements? This is the project, what are the requirements? And you had to wait all pen or paper, you say no books, just write. So see me and my classmates writing it down because you know we want to see where he's coming with because he always used to come with, with new ideas. I see one of the things that I chose Cipriani based on when I looked at when I looked at Costa TV and all those other institutions, I looked at their lecturers and I said I wanted to go to a place where the lecturers were actually practicing in their field and Cipriani had the best school in terms of that application versus academic because academics is important but having to leave school and then never doing our job doesn't make sense so Cipriani gave me the best value. And the pandemic made college a little bit harder in terms of having to switch from face to face because I prefer face to face having to go on online. But my lecturers made it easier, they made it fun to a lot to understand because to try to balance, manage, work, school, family life is a lot because it was every area of my life had changed with the pandemic, it wasn't just school. So I, I wasn't so stressed out but I was stressed out. It is a bittersweet journey in terms of it's coming to an end, so I'm like a leaving home for the first time again, but I'm happy that it's over. It is my pleasure to welcome the Minister of Labour to provide his remarks. Mr. Stephen McClashey has over 45 years of experience in the field of supply management, largely with the oil and gas sector. He holds a Bachelor's in Management and Integrated Information Systems and an MBA Finance from the Long Island University. He's a Certified Purchasing Manager with a Life Membership to the Institute of Supply Management. Mr. McClashey has spent the past 35 years of, at management, leading the development, establishment and implementation of best practices, including frameworks for contracts, procurement, inventory and logistics. Notably, this occurred at Trinidad and Tobago Oil Company Limited, Trintoc, the power generation company of Trinidad and Tobago Power Gen, the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago NGC, and Atlantic LNG. Mr. McClashey has also been at the forefront of major contract negotiations as a management level member of staff at various organizations at both the national and international arena. He is adept at change management, having been involved in several transformational projects and brings to the table a collaborative leadership style. The experience garnered over the course of his career has enabled the transference of knowledge through part-time lecturing where he was able to impart his overarching focus on procedural correctness, accountability, and professional integrity. He has taught at the UE School of Continuing Studies and the School of Accounting and Management, School of Higher Education, among others. Outside of the professional arena, Mr. McClashey has been a founding member of the Rotary Club of Point Fortin and a JC's international senator. He's an avid martial artist who, was all, who also enjoys coaching and counseling others on independent living skills. We welcome the Minister of Labor, Mr. Stephen McClashey. Chairman and members of the Board of Governors, directors, management and staff of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, viewers of this graduation ceremony, and most importantly, members of our graduating class. As the Minister of Labor, it gives me great pleasure to bring greetings on this auspicious occasion. I wish to express my continued appreciation of the work that the college is doing. Over the last 20 months, the entire world has had to adapt to a changing new normal. Indeed, it appears that each time we believe that we have rounded the corner of COVID-19, some other, even more threatening mutation confronts us. In this thinking environment, notwithstanding the constraints that this institution is faced with, 
I am convinced that you have done admirably and as your line minister and as a proud alumnus of this institution, I am quite pleased. Recently, I shared with the director and other members of the management of the college my view and indeed my mandate that the college needed to embrace a broader approach to its contribution to the country. I believe that this volatile environment, CCLCS can make a strong contribution to helping shape the country and the world of work. I believe that the institution should take every opportunity to share its perspective about matters affecting employment and industrial relations. In this regard, I am very pleased to personally participate in the recently held Caribbean Workers Forum. Over 427 registered participants from 29 countries came together to dialogue, debate, and reflect on the theme, Reimagining the New Normal. Representatives of the Ministry of Labor participated in a panel discussion and engaged participants with thought-provoking dialogue. I noted with pride that the conference also had two plenary sessions that featured Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, the Prime Minister of Grenada, and Dr. the Honorable Ralph Gonzalez, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, respectively. These presentations showcased riveting analysis of the Caribbean as at this critical juncture and highlighted the need for a focus on areas that impact labor locally, regionally, and globally. The participation of these two Caribbean statesmen certainly validated my views that the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies could play a pivotal role not only in the development and evolution of the industrial relations systems in Trinidad and Tobago, but indeed in the wider Caribbean. This was again manifested in the two-day regional cooperative conference held in March this year under the theme, Caribbean Cooperative Identity, Inspiring Our Community for Beyond. That conference explored the present and future impact of key elements within the cooperative and credit union sectors. Participants were able to achieve and contribute to the various solutions which would be utilized to position the sector and the college to play a leading role in the future. The conference emphasized the role that the college has and continues to play in terms of being an accredited academic institution that caters to the development of the working class, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but the region. My friends, according to Dr. Max Keon, there is a powerful difference between adapting to cope and adapting to win. Adapting to cope is akin to treading water. You are keeping afloat, but you are going nowhere. Sadly, after a while, you will tire and could be in a worse situation than you were when you started. Adapting to a win recognizes that while there are challenges and these challenges may appear to be severe, we need the headspace to make a determination that treading water is not an option. It is for this reason that as I salute your accomplishments today, I am proud that you belong to the school of thought that sees challenges as something to conquer. For certainly, if you were just content to cope, many of you would not have been here. More than 90% of the students in this institution are working people, most of you in your mid-career. Having been there myself, I know what it takes and what it has taken for you to balance work, personal life, and your studies. From my vantage point, as Minister of Labor, I have a first-hand view of the stresses that workers are under. It is no comfort that these stresses are now universal as we battle this global pandemic. The Prime Minister of our country, the Right Dr. Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, 
has stressed since the start of the pandemic that we need to protect lives and livelihoods. We have been playing our part on both sides of the equation. As the Line Ministry for the Occupational Health and Safety Framework of the country, we have had to ensure that we strengthen the provisions to protect workers' health and the workplace to make sure that loss of life or other forms of incapacitation is kept to the minimum. The bigger challenge has been addressing the protection of livelihoods. The reality is the world of work has drastically changed in the last 20 months, and with it, the processes and objectives of labor administration has had to adapt with a view to making sure that the country industrial relations framework is resilient, that the rights of the workers and the rights of employers are balanced in a framework of fairness, equity, and social justice. For example, the Ministry Conciliation, Advisory, and Advocacy Division has had to ensure the necessary infrastructure and tools were in place to facilitate the e-filing of trade disputes, the fulfillment of statutory mandates of conciliation. The division has also been responsible for the complaints, inquiries, and disputes from workers, employers, and trade unions. These concerns have included layoffs, retrenchment, alteration of terms and condition of work, and quarantine leave, the concept of mandatory vaccination and PCR testing, to name a few. We have put in place an outreach program featuring webinar series that focuses on highlighting and addressing areas of concern for the workers and employers which has been even more instrumental, particularly now during the pandemic. The ministry has continued its e-newsletter publication, The Labor Pulse, which seeks to address concerns that members of the society have with regard to labor issues within the workplace. The ministry has also made it a priority to share information about various aspects of COVID-19 and the workplace in various channels throughout the country. We expect that the increased dynamism in the world of work will continue apace and we will have to make continued adjustments to the way we think about what we do, the way we organize for what we must do, and the way that we deliver the services that are necessary to ensure social peace and harmony in the workplace. I think one of the more rewarding outcomes from this pandemic is the resilience that has been shown by some people. True, the circumstances of many have worsened, but it has been encouraging to see persons creating employment for themselves and even for others as they have transitioned into different sectors or even started new businesses themselves. It is my hope that they could, by example of what is possible, encourage other individuals in this position to also think about a possibility for their personal and financial growth. The Ministry and the Government of Trinidad and Tobago is committed to assisting these individuals to further achieve their goals through numerous government entrepreneurial support and the development of programs provided to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. So this is the context in which you receive your certificates today. It is a time of great uncertainty, but also a time of opportunity for those who are willing and able to recognize the openings and are committed to taking advantage of them. Having had the Cipriani experience myself, I feel confident that you have been given the tools that could assist you to navigate the environment and to come out stronger, but also for you to make a contribution not only to yourselves and to your families, but also to your beloved nation. Graduates, be proud of the fact that you are part of this college. As it continues to raise its profile and simultaneously remain committed to its mandate 
of contributing and realizing working persons' success for the betterment of the society. I want to offer special congratulations to our regional students. This is one of the pivots of the college that I am very pleased with. We have been able to seize the opportunity presented by the pandemic to extend our regional reach, and I certainly hope that this growth trend will continue. Once again, the Ministry of Labor and I extend our congratulations to the class that is graduating today in 2021. I also encourage you to face the challenges that will present themselves with boldness and determination, recognizing that you can shape the future, not only of yourself, but of this nation. I thank you. once again ladies and gentlemen next up we have the commencement address being delivered by mr l anthony watkins now mr watkins is the ceo and principal consultant of odyssey consulting limited a premier human resource and organizational consultancy in the caribbean he has been 
actively involved in public and private sector organizational transformation and development throughout the region since the early 1990s. After graduating from the University of Toronto with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Sociology, he worked in the field of social pathology and correctional services in Canada, and later in education on returning to Trinidad. A founding and honorary life member of the Human Resource Management Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Hermat, he is currently chairman of the Community Recovery Committee and has served as a member of the Caribbean Leadership Project Delivery Team, the task force for establishment of National Statistical Institute of Trinidad and Tobago and on numerous boards of directors. In 2020, he was conferred an honorary doctorate of laws by the University of Trinidad and Tobago, UTT, and was awarded a Public Service Medal of Merit Gold in 2019. As an OD consultant with over 30 years experience, his areas of specialization include organizational change and transformation, visioning and strategic planning, leadership development, team building, and expert process facilitation. His life work as an author, renowned keynote speaker, and his service to organizations and community-based initiatives are rooted in a commitment to enriching our region and the lives of our people. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium Mr. L. Anthony Watkins as he delivers the commencement address. The Honorable Stephen McClashey, Minister of Labor, the Board of Governors, Director Andre Henry, faculty and staff, Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, graduates of the class of 2021. Greetings. Today is a good day in your lives. Our lives though are influenced not so much by the events that occur, but by our interpretation of those events. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that says, 90% of what you see is behind your eyes. Think about that. 90% of what you see is behind your eyes. That speaks to the power of the mind. We know of the external realities. We know of the issues of COVID, economic disruption, institutional challenges, family issues, interpersonal things, and issues around labor, work, employment, and unemployment. Those are real for us. But how do we position ourselves in a time like this? Do we sit and suffer? Do we curse the wind and the waves? Or do we take action and adjust our sails? We need to change. We need to adjust. But what do we need to adjust? I want to suggest to you at a time like this, as you prepare to move on, that we adjust our thinking and our talking. In many ways, we talk about changing our mindset. I have a little issue with that, and I want to introduce you to the challenge that I have. When we speak of a mindset, we often speak of a fixed position, a place from which we see things. But today's world is not going to allow our minds to set. That stable position, that unmoving posture, is no longer acceptable in today's or in tomorrow's world. The Levine model of change spoke very often on freeze, move, and refreeze. I have news for you. There is no refreeze. It is unfreeze, move, and keep moving. Charles Darwin spoke to us many years ago when he, when, when he described something that people call, you know, the, the survival of the fittest. Now, that's an error. And it's not so much survival of the fittest, but what he spoke about was survival of the most adaptable. The survival of organisms that are able to adapt to the circumstance in which they find themselves. And it's in that context that I want to suggest to you that you adopt not so much a mindset, 
but introduce yourself and allow yourself to experience a mindscape. Now, when we think of a seascape or a landscape, we think of wide vistas, varying views, seeing well into the distance, a panorama of possibilities. And that's where our mind ought to be in today's circumstances. So think about adopting not a mindset for the new circumstance in which we find ourselves, but to walk and to travel on a new mindscape. What do we do in this new mindscape? In this mindscape, if we have to grow and develop and be all that we can be, there are some things that are absolutely necessary. It requires that we have a vision, that we have a dream, and that we speak to the issue of possibility. Much of what you see around you in the physical world did not always exist in the form in which it currently exists. Someone had a dream, someone had an idea, somebody had a thought, an electrical impulse in the brain, a chemical response in the synapses, and that was transformed into talk, talk into action, and today we have all the things, the gadgets, the buildings, the structures, the spaces in which we live and work. And it all began with the power of the dream. Understand the power of the dream. For you who have traveled a road and are about to take off into new, into new spaces, think about the power of that dream. There's a reality that we call gravity, but the dream to fly always lived in the heart of man. And in spite of the fact of gravity, today we go to the airport, our body weight, our two suitcases, the weight of the aircraft, the fuel and the cargo on that aircraft, and that aircraft taxis slowly to the end of the runway. The engines rev, the engines roar, and it races down the runway and takes off 10, 20, 30,000 feet for 10 hours on its way to London, in spite of the fact of gravity. If your dream is big enough, the facts don't count. You'll find a way, but what you need to have with that dream is a kind of desire and a passion, something that provides the energy, something that excites you so that in your every waking moment, there's something that you want to do, in spite of the fact of COVID, in spite of the fact of the economy, in spite of the fact of employment or unemployment, in spite of the fact of crime. If your dream is big enough, the facts don't count. What else do we need to do? We need to take a quick look back into our past. There's treasure there. There are experiences that you have had. There are lessons that you have learned. There are skills and strengths that you have developed. There are qualities and characteristics that you have molded out of the successes and the challenges of the past. And we need to celebrate those and understand that they are part of who and what we are as we go into the future. Stand in that spot and take a look through that mindscape and see all that you are coming out of your past. The truth is we move too quickly and we often leave the gifts behind. Those difficult moments have lessons in them. The licks that we took have lessons in them. The grind that we went through has gifts in them. And we have to take the time and not so much say, let's move on, but let's pause, let's reflect, let's tap into that, see what it has taught us, and let that be some of the strength that you take with you into the future. You also have, as you, as you move forward, to stand in another kind of place, a place in which you see today in the context of your life. I have no idea how old you are, but two years in a life of 40, 50, or 60 years seems infinitesimal. This is a moment in your life. There are so many other things that you have done. There's so much more that beckons you that today, last year, this year are mere moments. This is not your entire life and you need to see that. Understand that by standing in a different place. What we also need to see in terms of that mindscape that I'm suggesting, is looking at your life in the context of creation. Creation is guided by and is shaped by a duality. There is no up without down. There's no in without out, no light without darkness. 
Understand that they are seasons. Understand that this dual nature of creation, they are cycles. Seven years of feast, seven years of famine. What do we have to do? This is a challenging time, but it's not an end time. This is a difficult moment, but it's not the final moment. And we have to understand that even as the rains come and the rains go, as the tides come in and go back out, that there will be cycles and rhythms in your life. Welcome those cycles. Welcome those rhythms. This period is just one side of what you will experience. Emerging successfully from the current circumstance and growing into the future requires that we embrace our valley experiences. Valleys are often riddled with negative connotations, a sense that it's a difficult time. I'm having a valley experience. I'm down in the valley. We talk about the valley of the shadow of death. But I have news for you. If you introduce the notion of valleys and look at them in a different mindscape, what you will notice is that valleys are places of refreshment. Valleys are places where soothing and refreshing streams of water flow. Valleys are places where we can find shelter. Valleys are places of reflection, rest. Valleys are places where we can recharge. This moment that you're experiencing, if you feel it as a valley experience, do not lose the value of the valley. Think of it as a time when you can recharge, reflect on who and what you are. Think of it as a time when you can stand in a spot and look to the next mountain top that you're going to conquer. That's the value of the place that you're in right now. So I say to you, as you look into the future, value this moment. Cherish the period in which you find yourselves, but decide to look at it through a different lens, from a different spot on that mindscape, to be able to see all the dimensions of what you're experiencing, and then think about this not so much for you, but for this space in which we find ourselves, this country in which we live. Your institution speaks of a vision in which it's about social and economic development and empowering people. That means that you have been called to go through this experience to bring a gift and bring a blessing to someone who you may never see, to generations unborn. But your call is to make that difference. Do not disappoint us. People are waiting for you to bring your gift, stand in the mindscape, look at all these different perspectives, get your gifts, and bring them to the world. Thank you very much. This is the part of the evening that we have all been waiting for, the presentation of the graduating class 2021 by the Deputy Director of Academic Affairs, Mr. Sheldon Tolino. Congratulations to all of you. Director Dr. Andre Henry, it gives me great pleasure to present to you today 265 candidates who are eligible for degrees from Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. According to the record submitted to me, each of these candidates has successfully completed one of the prescribed programs of study. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors, I now confer the stipulated degrees on the successful candidates. Certificate in Credit Union Management. Cindy Andrews. Lorna Beans. Carleen Boeing. Makita Brown Alfred. Abigail Charles. Melissa Chavalier, Kellyanne Clark, Renisa Davidson, Nikisi Edwards, Tanisha James Simon, Lizanne Kelly. 
Ronel Lewis, Alicia Liverpool, Janelle Low, John Michael Nader, Anela Maharaj Subaya, Kerlin Marcel Mars, Jacqueline Monroe, Cesarina Noriega, Kezi Peters Shah, Sade Punjob, Makesi Purcell, Dale Ramboros, Laverne Richards, Makisha Shepherds Bono Seely, Natalie Wiley. Certificate in Credit Union Member Services and Operations. Samantha Dalrymple. Lana Fonilier. Nayuka George. Gillian Hanaway. Diane Jubiti. Crystal Nikum, Olivia Phillips Fraser, Denique Samuel, Lydia Seely, Dominic Webb, Marisha Williams. Certificate in Human Resource Management. Gillian Abbott. Esther Alexander. Odessa Amada Sylvester. Gloria Cruikshank. Monifa Kojo. Gabrielle Dixon, Susan Donald, Jamila Everson, Vanessa Francis, Keisha Gomes, Regina Marshall. Marissa Ramtahal, Melissa Sandy, Tashana Smart Felix, Melissa St. Rose, Roxanne Walcott, Certificate in Industrial Relations. Daniel Blake, Daniel Boyk, Wendell Goodridge, Shirlene Herbert, Chanel Philip, Sion Raphael. Kim Riley, Daniel Robinson, Certificate in Occupational Safety and Health, Magilta Dujon, Lyndon Farry, Michelle Felix. Oliver Francis, Gerald Francois, Sylvester Grant, 
Natalie Joseph. Hazel Luke. Amisha Moore. Rena Noel. Joan Peters. Elisha Singh. Andy D. Stephen, Makisha Trim Peters. Certificate in Occupational Safety and Health for General Industry. Ephraim Augustine, Wanaki Benjamin, Katifa Charles. Sean Kuchman, Daryl Lewis, Ria Nanlal, Kevian Pantu, Gloria Pemberton Soons, Rachel Phillips. Linton Pompey, Brendan Thompson. Certificate in Project Management. Che Cummings, Kerryan Gonzalez, Ryan Harrison. Nikella Moore, Kimran Ramjit, Katrina Richardson, Kyle Simmons. Certificate in Security Administration and Management. Justin Charles. Romelia Daniel Trisha John Shakim Murray Andre Roberts Nicomo Seaton Diploma in Emergency Management Ovon Alexis Rennie Byron Khan Daniela Cole Jamil Huggins Chinella Latchman Cassandra Quashi Ernest Richardson, Rodney Thomas. Diploma in Human Resource Management. Amanda Cameron, Nikisha Keto, Daniel Chin. Rebecca Islop, Isa Mohan George, Kyle Phillips, Kyle Polaya, Anisha Thomas, Diploma in Industrial Relations Practice. Jorisa Clark, Christopher Conyet, Carissa David, Akima Dick, 
Justin Dworica, Alan Gittens, Michael Gopi, Julian Henley, Marquesi Prince Martin, Shirlene Pemberton, Shivani Ram, Amanda Ratan, Leon Richardson, Rajkumar Tuloxing, Celine Vincent. Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health. Cheryl Ann Andrews. Giselle Archie. Brandon Forster. Tricia Francis Antonio. Tanika Hospitalis. Cassie Jofiel Herbert. Akil Lewis. Ria Nanlal. Stacy O'Neill. Kenneth Phillips. Ria Roberts. Kudel Rojas. Naomi Stout. Shama Taylor. Diploma in Project Management. Kiel Beans. Simon Callender. Shellyan Noel. Amida Rahim. Jade Tang. Diploma in Security Administration and Management. Mark Anthony. Daniel Ashby. Kevin Bramble. Aaron DeGraff. Colin Furlong. Natasha Grant. Marvin Griffith. Mike Innes. Marcus Jacob. Keisha Minard. Sheldon Pamphil. Crystal Smith. Nigel Thompson. Lonette White Robertson. Associate of Arts degree in Cooperative Studies. Rondell Russ. Associate of Arts degree in Human Resource Management. Michael Sideno. Andrea Headley. Aviana Mohan. Chanel Hoshi. Janel Ramdial Udit. Vishala Risal Singh. Deshawn Richens. Roxanne Russo. 
Nigel Seafoot, Joel Tone, Associate of Arts degree in Labor Studies, Jerome Chaitan, Kern Duncan, Ivy Ferguson, Ryan Fraser, Carol Green, Onika Hills, Marlene Lawrence Campbell, Joanne Ramdial, Denise Suknanan Maraj, Stefan Yearwood. Associates of Science degree in Environmental Management. Akeem Duncan. Keita Gordon. Associates of Science degree in Occupational Safety and Health. Rachel Ibrahim. Kayla Allen. Jezrin Bovell, Sean Chaitu, Shannon Da Costa Acosta, Patsy Difference, Marie Fraser, Ronaldo Garcia. Sheldon Jack, Melissa Jones, Kevon Joseph, Michael Callan, Jenna Mitchell, Melissa Nelson. Tagana Nicholas, Paul Smith, Melissa Vialva, Associate of Science degree in Project Management, Gillian Bedo Calendar, Matthew De Grilla. Tecla Lewis Peters, Associate of Science degree in Security Administration and Management. Ezekiel Carty, Kevin Earl, Jamila McCarthy, Neil Romalo. Bachelor of Arts degree in Cooperative Studies. Gillian Manswell Richard. Keegan Orozco. Bachelor of Arts degree in Human Resource Management. Samantha Allen. Simabu Batiste Sinclair. Shadi Granderson Noel, Nahida Grant Rodriguez, Rihanna Hema, Jan Maharaj Sukhdeo, Javed Manpool, Lena Rampasad. Bachelor of Arts degree in Labor Studies. Vaughn Budai. 
Ronel Braffitt, Ryan Ramdat, Mark Saunders. Bachelor of Science degree in Occupational Safety, Health and the Environment. Brandon Babulal. John Bengochi. Jade Sedeno. Anisha Charles. Melinda Davis. Josan Fortune. Richard Gossepi. Adrian Joseph. David Joseph. You Joseph. Neil Joseph. Afisha Lewis. Jeremy Maraj. Emily Munez. Joshua Modes. Isan Ned. Joan Phillips Tinia. Stephanie Samsia. Elliot C. Paul. Amelia Siposad. Amanda Tone. Leah Toussaint. Ron Wright. Bachelor of Science degree in Project Management. Shanique Barat, Renny Braffitt, Andrea Duncan Bettel, Garrett Hansen, Nikisha Melville, Renata Mo Dindial, Nolan Smith Bachelor of Science degree in Security Administration and Management Leslian Aguilera Homer Zafa Ali Jovan Allen Sean Caribon Robert Charles, Joel County, Sheldon Digans, Dexter Duljon, Kevin Govaya, Rhonda Joseph. Kurt Lambert, Wasif Mohammed, Marlon Moses. I am Patsy de France. I did occupational safety and health. The Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association awarded me with a scholarship to attend the college. They have been sending members to this college for many years because they believe the quality of education gain is excellent. The reason that I enjoyed my experience so much is that I engage in different activities. For example, I am a Gill executive. Being a part of the Gill executive, we took part in numerous activities. For example, the hamper drive, lunch with the Gill, 
via Robotan, as well as we did a magazine. A wonderful experience to bond with others. And all in all, it was a very good experience for me. I also took part in the health fair and we also did training with workers, which helped me and other students to take part in things that we will do in the field of work. Next up, we have our valedictorian, Miss Anisha Charles, who hails from the Occupational Safety, Health and Environment Department and she is your valedictorian here this evening. So, graduating class of 2021, please get to your feet. Round of applause for Miss Anisha Charles, your valedictorian 2021. Good day, everyone. I start by first giving all glory and honor to Almighty God for bringing us to this juncture. For without his guidance and intervention, this moment would not have been possible given the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of the graduates of 2021, I extend warmest greetings and salutations to the, honor to the Honorable Stephen McClatchy, Minister of Labor, the Chairman and members of the Board of Governors, the Director, Dr. Andre Vincent Henry, Mr. Anthony Watkins, feature speaker, lecturers, and staff of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, hereafter referred to as CCLCS. While we the students may have had many horrendous thoughts about you at times during this journey, be it after a very difficult exam, the timing of the exam, the tough words from some of the lecturers, the difficult courseworks, the long nights of studies, or simply finishing an, an assignment or completing exams. We are truly grateful for the efforts of the team at the CCLCS for your guidance, support, and overall management of the various programs that has, that has resulted in this year's graduation exercises. On behalf of the 2021 graduating class, I take this opportunity to ask God for his forgiveness for some of our thoughts and words about the institution and its team during those difficult moments. To the proud parents, relief spouses, children, friends, and well-wishers witnessing this proud moment, we the graduates thank you for your patience, support, and encouraging words through this journey. Punctuated with moments of frustration, temptation to surrender, and self-reflective questions such as, what am I doing here? Or, what in the world did I get myself into? But the hunger for success and the possibility of a brighter future with prospects of better employment created the impetus and the motivation to continue the journey. Now we proudly carry an academic status that affords us increased marketability in the world of work. The addition of post nominal letters, those initials behind our names, elevates us to a status that we must neither take lightly nor abuse, for it allows us a certain measure of respect. I speak for myself and I'm sure I do for the graduating class of 2021 when I say that those post nominals were earned through our courage, hard work and tenacity. Those letters now advertise our, our academic accomplishments and recategorize us in the employment market. Let us be proud of our achievements, but not boastful. Let us be firm in our conviction about what is right and true because of the added knowledge and understanding we have gained. And let us allow humility to temper our approach. Above all, we must let our personal brand represent the professional standard 
that is refitted of a graduate of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. It would be remiss of me if I did not e express my heartfelt appreciation to CCLCS for conferring upon me this honorable title, valedictorian of the graduating class of 2021. It is a humbling experience for which I say thank you. When I was first approached, instinctively, I was apprehensive because by nature, I'm a very reserved individual. But repeated prompts by family members and friends defeated my hesitancy and built my courage to proudly deliver this speech today. We all had our individual reasons and purpose that fueled the decision to further our education. For some, that decision would have been based on the aspiration to build upon the certificate or the diploma previously attained. While for others, it would have been the desire to align our field of practice with the requisite academic qualifications to complete our professional profile. Whatever our individual circumstance, we would have made a conscious decision to take that leap of faith in completing those application forms. The, the proud graduates of 2021 a testimony that CCLCS confidence in us was not misplaced. The many protocols of the COVID-19 pandemic saw the institution grappling to adjust and sustain the curriculum so as to ensure its contractual obligations to us were met. Traditional face-to-face -face exams, lectures, give rise to a new norm of virtual sessions and unsupervised examinations. Time never seemed enough to complete those exams. The scramble to meet deadline and upload exams to the portal, all the while the way down with tiredness from an all-nighter, seemed to increase with every submission. Many times I concluded that Cipriani and Flo were conspiring to test the mettle of the students because more often than not, malfunction seemed to occur a few hours before the deadline for submission. However, the pandemic and frustration like pressure on cold brought us to this bright and glorious place. So here we stand. Fellow graduates, there is no excuse not to make a, a difference in every industry, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but anywhere our travel takes us. We have graduated from one of the best. Further, there are many opportunities awaiting us worldwide that will welcome our professional position. This is a period of extraordinary circumstances for our country and the world at large, since we are all battling with this unprecedented virus. We have witnessed the emergence of a new era. We have transitioned into a new time. We have found ourselves into a new space. And we are now wrestling to accept and conform to a new paradigm. This observation encapsulates the state of emotional and cultural shock that this world has been plunged into due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The world of work for employees will forever be changed as employee workplace has morphed into employee workspace. Now more than ever, change agents are required to manage the changes that are required for transition. The late world icon, Nelson Mandela, left us with these powerful words that resonate for all time. And I quote, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. What we have gained at the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies empowers us with the ability to convert those words into reality. We have had a remarkable journey at CCLCS and I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that CCLCS will forever be etched in our hearts. I ask you to reflect on all I have just highlighted. Remember, 
that with due emerging norms come new opportunities for the graduates of this 2021 cohort. We must feel that positivity to action our educational experience gained over the duration of our individual programs. To be creative and innovative, bringing new ideas to all the industries that would benefit from our presence. Let us be the change that takes Trinidad and Tobago to the next level in its journey to align with the requirements of a first world country. Let each one of us be renowned for our contribution as a graduate of the new generation of professionals developed and produced by the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. As we go our separate ways, let us commit to living the motto of this tremendous institution. We have gained the knowledge, we have the courage, and we are entrusted with the responsibility. Congratulations to us all. We deserve this, we worked for it, and the Almighty saw us through. I thank you. What a fantastic graduation ceremony, 2021, Colin. Yes, indeed it was, Loriela. It was my priv privilege to share the Master of Ceremony duties with you. And it was my pleasure to thank be in your company thank you, this Colin. evening. Thank you, Colin. I would like to thank the Minister of Labor, Mr. Siva McClashy, Mr. L. Anthony Watkins for sharing his inspiring words in that commencement indeed. address. We'd also like to thank the board and the management and staff of the college for being able to make this ceremony possible today. Yes, and I would like to thank fellow faculty of the Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies, mm -hmm. students who have chosen Cipriani College as their premier of institute, course, course. as well as family and friends who have supported the students on this journey. We'd like to extend well wishes to each and every one of you, and we encourage you to continue to be safe. Yes, indeed. Yes. God bless. Take care. Thank you. Grenada, and I am proud to have been one of the first bachelor students to have studied online with Cipriani College of Labor and Cooperative Studies. I decided to pursue studies in human resource management after I was encouraged by the then president of the Grenada Public Workers Union to further my knowledge with the institution. It was not a difficult period for studying. However, I did encounter challenges along the way, such as internet issues, medical issues, long hours of classes, and providing care for my sick uncle and his wife. There were the times school, work, and family became overwhelming, that I had to seek support from family, lecturers, classmates, and friends. I also took time for myself to do things and ensure that I regenerate before the start of a new day or week. Some of my highlights at CCLCS were the interaction and support of the lecturers, such as Ms. Bridgewater and Mr. Ventu, the relationships between a diverse group of regional students, including Jamil, Anne Marie, Esther and Jillian, to name a few, the debates and discussions that were held in the various classes that were informative and not forgetting the comical aspect of it. To conclude, the memories I gained at Cipriani College will last a lifetime and the friendships created will continue to grow as for thanks to the Grenada Public Workers Union for sponsoring that part of my educational journey, which has been very rewarding. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. As we all enter the next chapter of our lives, we discover that life is a series of new horizons, new challenges, and new hopes.